If you want to be an elite offensive defenseman, you have to learn how to join the offensive rush. There's going to be plenty of offensive opportunities if you understand how to join that offensive rush, if you know how to do it the right way, if you know how to time it. Brent Burns is the absolute master at this, which makes him one of the best offensive defensemen in the NHL. So in this video, we're gonna look at some clips of Brent Burns. We're gonna dissect those clips, look at exactly what he's doing to join the offensive rush. And then we're also gonna go through a whiteboard walkthrough to teach you some different reads that you can make, make to teach you why, how, when to join that offensive rush. So let's start with the game film. Let's take a look at some of these game situations where Brent Burns is joining that offensive rush making plays, creating offense, and scoring goals. Here we're going to see Burns following up that rush, getting the pass here. Catch, shoot from the high slot, buries it. Now look where he's at right here, okay? Here he is with that puck at the top of the circles. He's making that pass into the, the neutral zone. And in order for him to get in position here, he's got to be hauling right at that blue line he's catching that puck. So he had to haul up ice to get into position there. So he's not just staying back, he's hauling up ice, and then he makes that quick release snapshot. And look, he's got space here. He's got some space between him and the shot blocker, but he decides to shoot that puck quick and early to make sure he's getting that puck on net. He's the last guy back, right? Here we have four other forwards here and a defenseman. So he's making sure to get that shot on net. He's making sure to get that shot through and he's scoring the goal. So in this example, there's gonna be a little turnover here in the neutral zone, okay? Pavelski's gonna pick off this D to D pass. And again, instead of just waiting back and watching Pavelski try to make a play here, Burns is gonna move up, help out. You know he's yelling for the puck because look, Pavelski isn't even looking at him when he makes this pass here. Okay, so you know he's yelling for that puck. And then again, instead of trying to make a fancy move right here, right? He does, he's got these defensemen flat-footed. He's got this guy flat-footed, but instead of trying to make a fancy move, he has a pull, a shoot to get that puck through, and finds the back of the net. So not only is he stepping up into that play, but he's making the smart decision to rip that snapshot, getting it past the shot blocker. So here we're gonna see a turnover by Pavelski, picks up that puck. Burns is coming up, yelling for it, yelling for it. He feeds him with that no-look pass because he hears him yelling. And then we have a pull with a quick release snapshot. Finds that lower corner. You can see that Brent Burns is extremely effective at joining that rush. So let's break down and go through a whiteboard walkthrough on different reads that you can make how, why, when to join that offensive rush to be a dominant offensive defenseman. When should you join the offensive rush as a defenseman? So that puck's breaking out up the ice. When should you join the offensive rush? There's two things, right? One is either you made the breakout pass or you made that neutral zone pass. So you're that uh, defenseman that made the pass and now you're sitting here going, all right, should I follow up that rush? Answer, yes. Always follow up the rush as much as possible after you make that pass. Okay, the second option is that you're the weak side defenseman. Okay, so the defenseman on the other side, and again, we could be talking about a breakout here, we can be talking about a regroup in the neutral zone, but you're the weak side defenseman. So your strong side defenseman, either you go D to D here, or your strong side defenseman comes back, you're supporting, you see them make that pass up. Should you join the rush? The answer is yes, you should join the rush. And the key is, what do I mean by that? Well, the one thing that you want to focus on is as soon as possible, you want to move up that ice and get as tight as possible to those forwards. And again, we're not talking about getting in front of the forwards. We're not talking about getting in front of the puck right now. We're talking about following up that rush. That's putting yourself in the right position. So as your forwards are attacking that offensive zone, you want to put yourself in the right position to be able to fill in as that fourth trailer. Now the only time you don't want to make that play is if your other defensive partner has already joined the rush. So you don't want both of those defensemen, in most situations, you don't want both of those defensemen up in that offensive rush because you at least want to have one safety valve. 
So if that's not the case, you want to be right there. So as soon as you make the pass, boom, you're going. As soon as you're the weak side defenseman, as soon as your other defenseman moves the puck up ice, boom, you're going. Now the idea is follow up the rush as tight as possible without being a defensive liability. So still make sure you're in a good position to play defense. Okay, meaning that, like I said, you don't want to get in front of the puck. You want to be behind that puck, behind your forwards, but you want to be up tight. This is also going to put you in a great position defensively. You hear if you move yourself up that ice tight to those forwards, you've tightened this gap up enough. Whereas if there's a turnover here, you're in a good position to play that rush going the other way. So you always want to be up in that rush as much as possible. You have to be aware of this situation as much as possible on breakouts and in the neutral zone as that puck's moving up the ice. You want to either anticipate as a weak side defenseman, you want to anticipate and start moving up with the rush. As a strong side defenseman, you want to use that momentum. And even if you're at a stationary position, even if you're making that pass completely stationary, I still want to see you start to accelerate quick strides, get up as close as you can to those forwards and move up the ice. Don't stay back. Staying back is going to do two things. One, it's going to take you out of the play offensively. You'll never have that opportunity offensively. And two, it's going to put you at a defensive liability. The further are you back, the further back you are as these uh, forwards are skating, if there happens to be a turnover, if the other team happens to come back the other way, this gap here between you and that puck is going to be a defensive liability because now you're at a stationary position and they're going to have momentum going the other way. So two important facts there. You have to always be focused on joining the rush. Always be focused on getting as tight as you can to those forwards and don't get caught. Uh, flat-footed, don't get lazy because you're going to be at a weak de position defensively. Joining the rush is going to put you in a strong offensive position and a strong defensive position. It's one of the best habits that you can get into. As you're joining the rush, you're coming up the ice, all right? You're coming up this ice to join the rush. Your forwards are attacking the offensive zone. When you start to get in this area, you know, one to two feet outside the blue line on each either end, that's when you have to start to make a decision. And that is, do you want to continue down into this high slot area to be that option as the fourth trailer, or it could be the third trailer if you have a forward that got caught back, or do you just need to pull up here and play defense? And the way that you're gonna determine that is two things. One is reading the other, other team's defense. So if they have a defense set up or they have a back checker and you don't have an opportunity to be open, stay back, okay? And the second thing you're gonna do is reading your team's line rush, all right? As your team's entering the line rush, is the puck in a good position on the outside of the rink? Does the forward have some time and space to be able to get their head up and make this play? And if that's the case, and both of those two things are good, you have, um, you have an opening here because there's not a good back checker on you. You have some, some time and space and your forwards maintaining possession of the puck. Great. Continue down and let this line rush play out. Make sure you're yelling. Okay. A lot of times these forwards here don't have the opportunity to get their head up to see somebody that's behind them. So make sure you're yelling for that puck again. Communication is gonna be key if you wanna get the puck in goal scoring situations. So yell, let them know that you're high. Let them know that you're available. Now you're gonna come into this area. If the play continues to develop, if you don't get that pass, you don't wanna continue down too far here. Once in a while, if there's an odd man situation, it's okay to continue, but you don't wanna stay down in this area. This is a great time now to bounce back out, to curl out if nothing develops, okay? So we're making that decision at the blue line if we want to continue down by reading the back checkers and reading the, the possession of our forwards. And then once we get into this high slot area, we're going to make the decision if we're actually part of that rush and we want to continue even if we don't get the pass or if it's a good time to peel off. 99% of the time you're going to want to peel off there and go play back to your defensive role if you don't get the puck. Maybe 1% of the time is an opportunity there to continue to engage in offense. Also, it's the situation of the game, right? If you're down by a goal, if you're down by two goals late in the third period, you're going to want to continue to maintain offense down here, right? If you're up by a goal, you're definitely going to want to peel off and go play defense. But 
we're making that decision on to continue here because a lot of times you're going to be in a great position in the neutral zone. You're going to do everything I talked about. You're going to follow up that rush tight. You're going to be in a great position, but the timing's just not right. The possession of the puck isn't right. There's a, not, there's a lot of clutter in here. The back checkers have done a good job. Don't even worry. Okay, pull up that pull up in that situation. It's not the right timing. It doesn't have to work out. Okay, so the, the idea here is every 10 times that you're in a good position to join that offensive rush and you actually move in to that high slot area, you're calling for that puck. You might get the puck only one time out of every 10. That's okay. So you have to put yourself in this position 10, 20 times a game if you want to get that puck and get two or three opportunities there. All right, so don't get um, discouraged because you're not getting the puck every time you're open, every time you're that high forward. Think about it. Every 10 times you're going to put yourself in a good position and you're open and you've decided to continue in and get be open to that high slot and you're yelling for that puck, you might get the puck once. But that one opportunity could be the goal. That one opportunity is going to be the scoring chance. All right, so 10 to 1 ratio, have that in the back of your mind. That's how much you have to be joining that rush. That's how much you have to put yourself in the position there. You want to put yourself in this position as much as possible. Get to this point, get to this blue line point here, this decision making point, as many times as you can in a game, because at this point you're going to decide to continue in or to pull back. Okay, so you want to be in a good position right here to be able to join the rush. It's giving yourself those opportunities that are key. And like we talked about before, that's going to make you a better defenseman. The faster you get up the ice, the tighter that gap is, the better you're going to be able to play rushes going the other way. Now, the last thing you need to focus on and a mistake that a lot of players make. So now we've coming in here, we're entering that uh, offensive zone. We're in a good position. We have the puck carrier attacking wide. We've made that decision to come in here and now we're calling for it and we're gonna get that pass. So we're getting that pass in this high slot area. Too many defensemen are gonna try to get this puck and get the perfect shooting opportunity. They're either gonna try to come in and stick handle here, continue to carry the puck down too far low. We have to use a catch and release shot here, okay? The majority of goals that are scored at a higher level from that defenseman coming in are either gonna be one-timers or catch and release shots. So even if you have another player coming on you to block that shot, sh use them as a screen. Shoot that puck, catch and release. If you're shooting it on the, if you're catching it on your forehand side, get that puck behind your body, get your weight in front, release the shot. On your offside, catch and release, all right? Get that in your mind. It has to be something that you've thought about. It has to be something that you're planning on doing. Otherwise, you're gonna get into that situation, you're gonna try to overhandle the puck. You don't wanna overhandle the puck in this area, okay? No, no overhandling the puck. We wanna get shots to the net, we wanna catch and release, quick shots. Don't overhandle the puck. Don't try to come continue skating in for the perfect shot because everything's gonna collapse on you here, okay? This is that high urgency area. So, avoid that mistake. If you want to make plays, if you want to score goals, work on that catch and release shot from this situation. You get that puck in the high slot, catch it, release it, get the shot off. I hope this video helped you and I want to tell you how you can even get more training like this. We have a free Brent Burns challenge. All right, so this is free training that we're going to take you through to level up your game, level up your training and dominate from the blue line, just like Brent Burns. So you can go to 247hockey.com slash burns. You can type that in right now, 247hockey.com slash burns. You can also click the link in the description. Now, if you like this video, leave us a thumbs up. Leave me a comment. Let me know what NHL players you'd like us to see us do next. What NHL players would you like to see us break down and help you train like next? Now also, if you want to access that challenge right now for free and get started, click right on my face. It's going to take you right to that free Brent Burns challenge. Seriously, click right here. All right, right here. Seriously, you're going to love this free challenge. Click right here.